Hey guys, my name is Frank and this is the Pothon Programming Video Log and today I'm going to talk about how to load and use JSON inside of your HTML5 and JavaScript project. This is going to be perfect if you want to load some levels for your HTML5 game. So stay tuned because you need to know that stuff to do this stuff or you need to know this stuff. You need to know this stuff to do that stuff. So stay tuned. In this video, I'm going to be telling you guys how to write some JSON. I'm going to be telling you guys how to load that JSON and I'm going to be talking about how to use that JSON to display stuff in your application. So basically what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be taking this right here, this JSON string that comes directly from a file that I wrote, a JSON file, and I'm going to be converting it to JavaScript and then I'm going to be parsing it on my browser window however I want because I can do whatever I want with the data once I have it in JavaScript. So let's talk about how to actually write a JSON file and what a JSON file is. So a JSON file, JSON just stands for JavaScript Object Notation, that's the acronym. And basically it just allows you to write data in JavaScript format. So if you look at this, this is JSON and it looks just like an object literal that you'd write in JavaScript, right? So we have our object literal, we have our opening curly bracket, our closing curly bracket, and inside we have variables, uh, objects, anything you want to find inside of a normal JavaScript object. So you can do a couple different things. You can define an array with these square brackets. You can define an object with curly brackets, just like in JavaScript. Everything is a literal here. We don't use uh, constructors. We don't use new operators. We don't have access to any of that stuff. JSON is really basic. It's just a really basic way of writing lists and that have hierarchies in them. So you can create, you can nest multiple objects in JSON, kind of like I'm doing here. This would be the, the parent object. Whatever I, I parse my JSON file into is going to be the parent object of this inline object here that I have to find inline inside of my main JSON object. And inside of this object, I have a string. So it's basically just JavaScript, and you have access to a few JavaScript data structures, like arrays. So here I'm defining an array. And keep in mind that all the values that you define inside of JSON have to have quotes around them. That's why all these have quotes around them. That's one difference that you're going to have to keep track of. And then everything else just kind of flows. Like if you know how to write JavaScript, you already know how to write JSON. You just have to simplify it, not think about it too much. So here I'm defining an array that contains the values apple, sandwich, the number two, and the string a dog. Simple, easy to write. Numbers, here's a number. I'm defining a number here called number. Numbers can just, they don't need quotes around them. So you don't have to do that. If you do that, it gets parsed as a string. So we don't want to do that, but you can have floating point numbers. You can't, I'm fairly certain you can't do math in here. That's not going to work, but you can just store information. You can store a number. You can also store Boolean values. So that's pretty handy too. And those raw object objects like numbers and Boolean values, they don't need quotes around them. Strings, however, do need quotes around them, so you put those quotes in. Object literals here contain values that look the same as these values. You have to define your value names with strings and the values inside. If it's a number, you don't need to put quotes around it. If it's a string, you do need to put quotes around it. And that's really all I can think of. JSON is really simple. I suggest you fiddle with it. Check out the link in the description to the source to this example, and you can actually have a, a link there's a link down there too to the working example and you can actually fiddle around with this stuff if you want to do that so go check this stuff out now that you know how to write json a little bit and what json looks like we're going to actually load the json into our javascript and parse the json string that we get from our json file into a javascript object so how i do that is with the load method that i have here in my javascript code so it's a really simple method. All it is is just a function with a parameter to specify the URL we want to load. So remember that JSON file that I just showed you? The file name is json.json. Inside is our JSON string. So when I call this load function at the bottom of my application here, I'm going to call load 
and then json.json specifying that file name. So inside of my load function, I'm not really doing all that much. I'm just defining an XML HTTP request object, and that is going to handle all of our communication with the server and loading our object. So I define a XML HTTP request object. I add an event listener to handle a ready state change event, and I give it a ready state change event function for handling that. And then I come down here and I tell the XML HTTP, HTTP request to open the specified file, which is json.json, with the get method, and I send that request off to the server. Now the server is going to get that request, it's going to open my file, it's going to get the file content, which is just my raw JSON string from inside the json.json file, and it's going to hand it back to my application, and it's going to do that inside of my ready state change event handler. And it's going to do that in the form of response text. So that's how you load that JSON file. This is really how you load any text file. So if you want to load anything, you can use this method, but it works for JSON too. So if you want to know how to load JSON, this is how to do it. Just keep in mind that you get the actual text string from inside of the file, inside of the XML HTTP request objects response text. Pretty simple. Finally, now that we have written our JSON, we have loaded our JSON, we are going to actually do something with the JSON. So as you can see here on my browser window, I have some text inside of a P element. I have the exact content of my JSON file, which I loaded up. So I now have access to it in JavaScript, which allows me to print it inside of my P element. And I'm also printing the individual values at the bottom of the screen here, also inside of my P element. So how am I doing that? How do I get access to my JSON in JavaScript object format? Well, it's really simple. So remember, I got that response text from loading the file, the JSON file. All I have to do is use the browser's built-in json.parse method to parse that response text. And that response text is literally just gonna be the JSON string from our file. This is literally the string that you would see inside of the json.json file. So we're gonna parse that. It's going to create an object literal of this information inside of the value that I've called JSON. And I realize I'm calling everything JSON, all the files are JSON. So it's kind of a weird naming convention I got going on here. I should have been a little more specific, I guess. But this JSON object is going to hold our parsed JSON string. And when you parse it, it just turns into regular JavaScript that you can use. So now this JSON object is an object, a JavaScript object that has all the values that I define here in JSON. So it has this array, it has this number, which is equal to four. It has the value string, which has the string, hello, I'm a string inside. And it has a nested object called object with a value called string that holds the string, I'm a string from inside a JSON object. So I've literally just used json.parse to convert my JSON file into a usable JavaScript object. And to use that, you just use it like any other JavaScript object. So if you know how to do that, you know how to do this. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm taking the exact response text from my XML HTTP request object, and I'm putting it inside of the P elements inner HTML. So that's why you see this exact response text inside of my P element. And then down here on the bottom, I'm going to take the inner HTML and I'm going to add each individual set of values from my JSON. So the array, I'm just going to add json.array to this first line. And you see it outputs the array to the first line. The second line is going to be the number. So I'm just outputting the number. And here, this next line is where it gets cool. The line after that, I'm doing I'm printing json.number plus two, and then I'm actually going to, well, I guess I put four in there, but let's do plus two so we can actually see what that looks like. I'm going to come over here to my browser. I'm going to hit F5 to refresh the screen, and remember that number was four inside my JSON? Four plus two is equal to six. So I can actually manipulate this, and it's, it's just JavaScript, so just converts that JSON into JavaScript and I can use it just like JavaScript. 
So it's a really great way to load stuff. It's really easy and simple. If you already know how to write JavaScript, then you pretty much already know how to write JSON. So it's just a really great natural way to load your files up. And that concludes my short tutorial on how to write JSON, load JSON, and use JSON in your HTML5 application. Why am I showing you guys this? It's really boring and it's really easy to learn. Well, I just wanted to be complete in my explanations because my next tutorial is going to be on how to actually load levels from JSON that you can use inside of a game. So I figured rather than explaining all this inside the context of that tutorial, I would just focus on loading the level and how to design levels a little bit more inside of that tutorial and focus on how to actually write and load and use JSON inside of this tutorial. So stay tuned for that next tutorial because it's going to be cool. If you guys like this video, like it on YouTube because that helps. Subscribe to my channel because I'm going to have more cool videos coming out. And check out the comments, or not necessarily the comments, but check out the description because I have a link to the working example and the source code on my GitHub page in there. So check that out, and I guess I'll see you guys next time. Have a good one.